Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Support Summer Readers and Watch Reading Skills Store. My name is Sean Caracello. I'm the Business Development Manager here at Bookstores. I'm joined today by Katie Hostman, the Collection Development Manager, and by Stephanie Schwab, the National Sales Manager. And as many of you know, Bookstores is uh, a through pre-K and 12, we partner with districts across the country to get the best high interest titles in the uh, hands of students, both in the, during the school year and in the summer months. And we're here to talk today about those summer months. Um, two of the things that we're gonna touch upon are strategies for motivating summer readers and providing access to books, popular summer books and tips for selecting titles, resources for supporting parents and guardians at home, and don't worry about taking notes as we go through this because the slides will be emailed to all participants afterwards. So without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and jump right in with Stephanie. Hi, good afternoon. Sean said thank you for joining us. I am Stephanie Schwab, the Bookstore's National Sales Manager. I am a former educator, have a passion for reading and literacy and helping kids find the right books to spark their love of reading. And in addition, I'm also a mom to two amazing um, children. I have a 17-year-old son and a 12-year-old daughter. Katie? Hi, I'm Katie Hostman, the Collection Development Manager at Bookstores, a former teacher as well. And with the Collection Development team, we partner with publishers to select the best, most engaging, high-interest titles in the industry, and we curate the Bookstores collection. Also, in my past at Bookstores, I worked directly with teachers to align books to curriculum, classroom libraries, book rooms, and also to help implement summer reading programs, which we'll talk about today. So Stephanie, I'll get us started. So we've all seen, I'm sure, similar, if not the same research on preventing the summer slide. We're gonna just touch on a few of the highlights of that research. Unfortunately, summer reading loss is one of the major obstacles to children reading at grade level um, and at a high proficiency by the end of grade three. And it appears that that summer loss is cumulative. So over time, those gaps just continue to grow. And then also, unfortunately, the school year just doesn't seem to be long enough to close that achievement gap. And we are fortunate enough that Dr. Richard Allington and his partner, Ann McGill Franzen, did a, an extensive three-year study on that summer reading, summer proficiency, reading proficiency loss, also known as the summer slide. And they showed that kids who do not read over those two to three months of summer tend to lag behind and lose reading development, whereas those kids who do read over the summer gain an entire month of reading proficiency. So imagine having most of your entire class, if not all, in a perfect world, returning to school in the fall actually uh, ahead of where they left in the spring in that reading proficiency. Key to this study was that students chose their own books and kind of is no surprise when we're all left to our own devices, much like adults love to read pop culture, things that we're familiar with, um, such as our favorite musicians, athletes, movie tie-ins, and TV show tie-ins. That's what they found um, were similar with the kids as well. They tended to gravitate toward things that they were already interested in and had a background knowledge about. And they also found that this reading over the summer, books that they chose and were interested in, was far less expensive and less involved and extensive than summer school or some kind of a comprehensive school reform. And in a nutshell, what they found was providing those self-selected books for summer reading produced as much or more reading growth as attending summer school, which is really a uh, profound finding from that research. Some key points to their conclusion, um, you know, how do we get books into the hands of kids for summer reading? And they kind of anticipated the questions that were going to come out of this research project. Some ideas they had were keeping the school libraries open during summer break. Um, we've heard some amazing stories of teachers, faculty members, community members, and even parents volunteering to chunk up um, time so that they can make themselves in the library available to students. Sending summer reading books home with students is incredible and even taking it up a next level is building on that prior knowledge, providing those high interest books. What is so key is that those students want to read. And Katie's gonna talk a little bit about that all sounds great, but how and where do we even get started? So starting a summer reading program can be 
overwhelming. We have experts like Dr. Allington saying, if students don't read over the summer, they lose reading proficiency. But take a breath and keep in mind that the primary goal of summer reading is simply to get students to read. So there are four keys to implementing a summer reading solution. Those are um, access, choice, readability, and home engagement. And we'll go into detail for each of these in the next few slides, but just to, to highlight some points, access simply means access to books. Choice is the importance of self-selected titles by the student. Readability, knowing that the book should be at an independent reading level and not creating frustration over the summer. And then home engagement, how parents and guardians can get involved at home. So the number one key is choice, providing, or excuse me, access, providing access to books. So students must have books in order to read. We understand that access is difficult over the summer for so many families. So we have some resources here to help and to promote with those families as you wrap up the school year. The first is Little Free Libraries. This is an initiative really gaining popularity across the country. These are small take a book, return a book, free book exchanges that are popping up in many communities. I have the link here to check out a location map to see if there's a little free library near you. If there is, please share this with parents, with your students, so they know where to find those books. But also keep in mind that these are curated by individuals and there can be a variety of content. So not all books will be children's books, there will be adult titles. So just keep that in mind that there's a wide variety and students will need to know what fits them the best. And there's a little book of, um, or a picture of our little free library at Booksource. We just put it up and joined the organization um, last month. Yes. So we're really proud of that. And if you're in the St. Louis area, stop by and shop our little free library. Okay. Also public libraries, you can't forget about those. I know that transportation can be difficult, but it is well worth the trip to visit the nearest public library during the summer. Community programs, we forget that a lot of times, state centers, YMCAs, there's even a coffee shop by my house that has a small area of books. Those are great places to go as well. But primarily, the number one way students have access to books over the summer is through summer reading solutions. So according to Dr. Allington, there's research that schools can alleviate the summer reading achievement gap by spending approximately $40 to $50 a year on summer books for each child. However, you can find several summer reading solutions by companies that include three to five books for only about $25. So that's much more affordable. So here are a few ways to get started, especially if you're concerned about that funding. And we'll touch on that later too in the presentation. So some options for funding are, of course, Title I, and then partnering with your school PTO or PTA, and they can help with some of those dollars. Also, how to get hand, books into the hands of students. So I worked with educators who set up summer reading programs, and some schools have students fill out a survey to determine interests. We have some title lists at the end here that might help get started. Also, other schools go to sort of a big box solution, like you order a bunch of the best sellers, maybe in 10 or six quantity, and lay them out on cafeteria tables or library tables and have students collect the titles that way. There's also the solution of the mystery backpacks. So you order a backpack of books for each student to take home. And that's great. You do have books, but the issue with that is you don't achieve your goal of having the students select the books and it doesn't help if you provide books that kids don't want to read. So make sure that they're books that students want to take home. Can't wait to take home. And then what if your school isn't ready to implement a school-wide solution? That's fine. Start small. We'll provide some tips for the most success in that case too. So make choice a priority. We talked about how to motivate students to want to spend more time reading over the summer, and that's through self-selection. 
So really choosing those books based on their personal interests and topics that they find fascinating. So that's how you gain the buy-in. And in the classroom, what this looks like is you can help students find popular and engaging titles. You can look for information about engaging books from blogs, education companies, bookstores, and library displays. If there's time to visit the school library in the last couple weeks of school, go ahead and do that and have students get excited about just the number of books and the options. And if you have a weekly newsletter to send to parents and guardians, send some resources there. Get the buzz going at home so parents have those resources over the summer as well. So further building buzz in the classroom. Here are some tips. There is so much power in kids talking about books with their peers. They get so excited and it spreads the excitement. So during those last few weeks of school, get students sharing their books. Have small book talks. Have them talk about their favorite books of the year or what they are excited about reading over the summer. Series are another way to motivate students. With series, you start reading and there are always options in the future. So that's a, a wonderful way to continue that. And you can always visit websites of authors. YouTube has a lot of fun book trailers, author interviews, sometimes even read aloud. So share those, Google them, watch them beforehand, but then share them with your students. <laughs> and then it's important to not overwhelm students with too many options. So when you have self-selection, that's great, but where do you start? Help students discover their high interest titles simply by um, genres, exploring fun and engaging topics for the summer. Usually things like humor, sports, mystery, exciting nonfiction, summer stories, and realistic fiction go over very well. Further, once you have a broad selection, make sure that you have plenty of different types of books within the topic or genre. Students should have access to books with characters and experiences to which they relate and also learn about new experiences in, and backgrounds. So publishing, the industry has really come a long way with representation and inclusive books. And there is much more diverse authorship now for authentic experiences and we can't help that enough to really truly find that diversity and inclusion in your titles. And there is a title list included at the end of the presentation with fun reads, both with classroom favorites and newer titles as well, featuring the most popular titles and authors with eye-catching covers, and they're all paperback to save you some money as well. And just as important as choice, students must be able to read the book. So you want to avoid frustration by considering reading levels. And also keep in mind that when students are interested in a book, the interest alone can bump them up a reading level and it'll be okay. So there's definitely a band. Reading level is only an approximate guide and still allows students those, those choices for the books. If you don't use a level reading system, you can practice the five finger rule on the slide. So to help the student find the just right book, have the student hold or open the book to any page and start reading. Then hold up a finger every time they stumble on a word. So if they don't know it or they stumble on it, just hold up a finger. And if it's zero to one word, the book's too easy for them. It's a little bit of book candy. If it's one to three words, or excuse me, two to three words, it's just right for their reading level. If they stumble over four or five words. Four is probably okay to try, but it's getting hard. And then five is probably too hard and creating some frustration that you don't want over the summer. So maybe help guide them to something in that same topic or genre that is a little easier. And then if you do know the student's reading level band, but there's a difference in the type of reading system that you're looking at. I know if you're using DRA and you only have Lexile, Lexile available, there is a handy leveled reading conversion chart here and the link's there for you, so feel free to share that. But also know that those are different leveling systems and they use some different criteria. It is just a guide to help you. So use these resources in the classroom and also share these strategies at home. And Stephanie will speak more about building that bridge between school and home. Thanks, Amy.
So a great way to get families excited about reading with kids over the summer is to consider sponsoring a family literacy event at your location. Um, this is a great opportunity to distribute the summer reading books that the kids have selected. Builds great excitement. The kids get to see what each other have chosen and maybe even make some plans that they can swap books as the summer goes on after they've completed their reading. You can offer sessions during that time where you're actually modeling the read aloud and sharing some read aloud tips with parents, guardians, um, whoever in the community would be uh, reading with the students. If there are tutors available, then they would be welcome as well. And this is great also for older siblings, aunts and uncles, grandparents, whoever, again, would have the opportunity to read with the kids over the summer. And it can be intimidating. Um, unfortunately, as we know, not everyone is comfortable reading aloud to or with a child and they aren't sure what to do, what to ask. So being able to have the opportunity to model those read alouds can be very powerful and help uh, put them at ease and give them some tools that they can take home and use on their own. So important is to demonstrate the fun of reading, planning activities to go along with the read alouds, giving suggestions for discussion, just really um, drawing on those natural reading behaviors that they're gonna take as a lifelong reader into life. We all, um, reading can be and should be a very social activity where we are sharing books and we get excited to make our recommendations and give them an opportunity to do that. You can show those book trailers that Katie was referring to earlier if the kids are have a similar interest um, and pair those along with those activities. And then finally, a, a great tool and resource to use is to invite the local library, have them come, you know, they could even set up a display and have the, some library card applications available there on site. And really important, not everybody will be able to make it, so keep making those connections. If you have access to email over the summer, or you have maybe a school website or a Facebook page or a class website, you can send resources home to those parents and guardians over the summer. Uh, as Katie referenced at the end of this one, we do send the email and you have the link to our resources. Our collection development department, which Katie works with, has made these fantastic summer reading uh, lists for you. Those are great to send home because sometimes I know as a parent, I'm not always sure, well, I have the luxury of working at bookstores, so I am up to date on a lot of the new and popular titles, but not everyone is. So it's great to uh, be able to make recommendations to parents for what would be appropriate, but also what their kids are interested in. And then ideas for reading related activities, again, maybe some conversation starters or some probes that they can use with the kids to really get talking about it. And then a letter explaining what is summer slide? Why is it important to read over the summer? And, you know, again, here are some things that you can do at home uh, that will have your child ready for the new school year. Again, we are gonna be sending out a link to these printables that you will be able to print, use with your students and also share out at home. We have a great summer reading bingo, which just talks about different types of reading, um, ways that you can kind of fit reading in throughout your day that are fun. The summer reading lists are in bands. So we have a K to two list, a three to five and a six to eight, again, curated by our classroom literature experts in our collection development department. And they really are keen on those books, those high interest books that kids love to read. And that really should be the focus, yes, for all the time, but definitely during the summer, get away from those more academic reads and let them understand and come to know the fun of reading if they haven't found it already. There's also a summer reading at home guide to send home with the parents with some tips and information that's ready to, to print and share. And what summer reading would be complete without some bookmarks. So there's a couple different bookmarks to, to download and print and share home. And this all sounds great, this but sounds great. burning in everyone's mind, Sean, yeah. where am I going to find the money? Exactly. So <laughs> we're talking about access. We're talking about choice. We're talking about uh, how to get the folks at home engaged in this and all this fun, exciting, cool stuff that we want to do uh, with the students over the summer in regards to their reading development and, and their appreciation for reading. Um, and all that costs money, I imagine. So uh, as Katie uh, mentioned earlier, PTO and PTA funds are a fantastic uh, source to, to uh, fund your summer reading solution. Um, there are a lot of private and public grants that are also very great uh, resources to, to fund these solutions as well. And uh, that end of the, end of the year site 
funds, the, uh, the use it or lose it funds, those are great as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then of course, Title I. Uh, Title I is often what's, uh, what's used to, uh, to fund these summer reading programs, summer reading solutions, because Title I is not used to fund uh, core solutions, but rather supplemental solutions. And uh, when the, the environment that Title I strives to, uh, to provide is one that is a positive attitude towards reading, um, to, to raise these students' confidence in their own reading ability and their, their appreciation for reading, uh, their self-esteem. And the big piece is that home engagement, uh, enabling parents to be reading partners with their child. So that's where those, those, uh, those home solutions, those, those pieces to really engage the parents, the guardians, are so important when, uh, when looking at summer, summer reading solutions and how to fund those solutions. Um, so yeah, so we've got access, we've got choice, we've got the folks at home, got a couple ideas of, of how to pay for it, which is always important. Um, next one. So if anybody has any questions, um, you can reach out to me directly. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you continue to work through your, through supporting your summer readers, uh, readers, here's some helpful links and resources. Uh, one of them is are the printables that uh, that Stephanie, Stephanie mentioned earlier. You can see uh, book sources summer reading solutions at the link in, the, in this last page, which will be in the slides that are sent out to everybody. And down there at the very bottom, that last bullet is my actual email. And if you have any questions of how book source can help you with your summer reading solutions, feel free to reach out to me. And if you have a question that more pertains to maybe with, with uh, what Stephanie does or talked about or what Katie uh, talked about, I will definitely put you in contact with them. And I believe that uh, that comes to, brings us to our conclusion. It does, we've had a couple questions about the uh, slides and yes, when we do send an email here uh, soon, we will definitely send out not only the presentations, you'll have access to all the slides. I think it is a great idea. We've seen some things pop up in the chat about mm -hmm. wanting to have these resources to share with our principal. And I think mm -hmm. um, definitely, I when I taught most recently, I had a principal who had a math background. So she was not, um, didn't have a literacy teaching background. And so she welcomed any and all resources about literacy that we could provide. So definitely, I think sharing these with your um, decision makers, with parents, with anyone who has, shares a passion for getting books into kids' hands, I think is fantastic. So we will make the recording available so that you can share not only this webinar, but you can share the slides and the principles and hey, Sean's email address if they have questions. So we'll take the heat off of you. So we appreciate your time. We know that time is your most valuable commodity and we look forward to partnering with you to help support literacy all year long, but especially during the summer months. So thank you guys very much and thanks for joining. Have thank a great you. afternoon. Thank you.